This is Quick Talks, and I'm Lynn Watkins. I'm finally home again after running around a lot, and there are lots of chores to do and a lot of catching up to do, including planting the garden, trimming the roses, laundry, and spring cleaning. So the last thing I need this weekend is to have a big spiritual test. But you know what? I've got one. And if you're a believer in Jesus Christ living in the United States of America or in any of her territories, you've got one too. Whether you like it or not. What is this test? Well, it has to do with politics. Yes, to many people that's a dirty word, especially in the church. But we are commanded by the Lord God Almighty to pray for our leaders. And as Americans, we have the responsibility as a self-governing people to be involved with government. And that means we all have to be involved with politics. <laughs> I'm trying to be a little bit funny about a serious situation. Unless you've been asleep for about, oh, four months, you probably know that the former president of the United States, Donald Trump, has been put on trial and he was found guilty just yesterday, according to when I am filming this. It is not my purpose here right now to discuss the legalities of that trial, but the spiritual test I'm speaking of is how does the church handle the results that came out? How do we handle the politics of the situation? As believers, our first response must always be to respond to every situation we face as disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what does Jesus expect us to do? Let me turn to John 17. Jesus is about to go to the cross. The thing that is on his heart is this. I pray not on behalf of these only, that is the disciples at the Last Supper with him, but also for those who believe in me through their message, that means us, that they all may be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I am in you, so also may they be one in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. The glory that you have given to me, I have given to them, that they may be one just as we are one, in the, I in them and you in me, that they may be perfected in unity, so that the world may know that you sent them and loved them as you loved me. Right there, we get the heart of Jesus. He wants us to be unified. He wants us to be together, even in our different personalities, even in our different beliefs, even in our different backgrounds and perspectives. He wants us to be one with him and let the love of God flow through us so that others will know that we truly are his disciples and that Jesus is the Son of God. Do you see what the test is? You may not be ready for it, but we're in the examination room right now. In case so we're saying, oh, well, that's only said one time. I can sort of ignore it. Let me read these things to you. Ephesians 4, 3. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. 1 Corinthians 1.10 I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, that you all agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. The Old Testament tells us how blessed is unity among brethren. It's like the anointing oil. Do you get that? If we want to have the power of the Holy Spirit operating in our lives, in our local church's life, and in the body of the ecclesia throughout the United States, we must be in a bond of unity. Philippians 2.2 2 says, Be like-minded, having the same love, being one in the Spirit and one in mind. So how do we do this? Well, first of all, we have to humble ourselves. We have to admit that we personally don't know it all. 
our brothers and sisters in Christ came from different backgrounds. They have different personal stories. They have maybe different cultural stories. We have to recognize we don't all have to be exactly the same. 1 Corinthians 12 says we are all part of the body. Some people are right hands, some people are left hands, some people are eyes, some are ears, some people are feet or toes, or maybe your knee. But even one person's hands are not exactly alike. Look at the back of my hands. Can you tell which one gets whipped up on by the dog? Brothers and sisters are not exactly the same. I have a brother in Christ. His background was totally different than mine, and things that seemed obvious to me were not obvious to him. He approached things in a totally different manner, and as I talked to him, as I communicated with him, I began to understand the lenses he was seeing through. And you know what? He is one of the most godly men I know who has a heart to share the truth of the gospel with other people, and yet we disagreed politically. So how can we maintain a unity when we may have totally different political beliefs? It's because we keep our eyes focused on Jesus. Did you know, as Americans, we actually have specific mandates and directives from the Lord to accomplish His purposes for the United States of America? Well, looking at the clock, I'm already over, so I'm going to stop now. But please join me for the next discussion on how to maintain the unity of faith and fulfill the purposes of God in a very difficult season. The Lord bless you and keep you. This is Quick Talks. Goodbye. Mm-hmm.